Madam Speaker. This? That's what it is, bud. Vice President, President of Bass, Major League Fishing, and FLW, or ML, FLW, which sounds weird. First Lady, Bubba Thomas, anglers, danglers, and others who claim to love fishing or love competitive fishing. Today, tonight, right now, we're going to talk about the state of bass. We meet tonight and today, or whenever you're watching this, in another moment of time, which, which honestly, whoever thought we would get more confused or have more drama in what we love. What started last year for much speculation and fun has now become deadly. And other anglers would want to come in. You see Mike Iconelli right here. Well, sometimes anglers butted heads. You think that's cool? I said, you think that's cool? State of bass is in disarray. From anglers upset to tweets to going back to other formats to the purchase of FLW that Major League Fishing just did. That acquisition has caused another amount of drama that I don't think we are ready for. Everyone has an opinion. And of course, this is just my opinion. This is what I see from people that I've talked to or that I know or just putting things together. So let's take a look at the state of bass. So if we're going to do this, let's start from the beginning. As we all know, the bass elites have been around for years. In 2010, Gary Klein and Boyd Duckett created Major League Fishing with the help of 10 or 11 other anglers. Kevin Van Dam, Edwin Evers, a group of anglers that came together and they were going to make a new television production that would allow them to not only brand themselves better, promote their sponsors, but allow them to make additional money for major for themselves and Major League Fishing. And in 2011, they had their first tournament series, and it's just grown since then. At first, anglers were not paid if they won. And then there was another option that if you weren't one of those few anglers that got invited to start off with, you could purchase in for twenty or $25,000. The series started off that it was going to be just a handful, a group of anglers competing against each other in a catch, photo, and release tournament series, something that was completely different. Also, there would be people on the boat that would score every bass as they landed them. This was something that the anglers either liked or loved or they hated because they would get updates on how other anglers would do, and it added drama to how it is. But again, it's a TV production television tournament, fishing tournament. Now, when we talk about the Bassmaster Elites and the anglers, there's been many, much speculation on why this Major League Fishing came in and why those 80 anglers left and went to Major League Fishing. Well, there were a lot of anglers that were very unhappy with what Bass was doing. It's a pay to play fishing tournament and it's very expensive. $5,000, $5,500 to, to, to go to a tournament. And you're not guaranteed anything back. And when you look at gas and all of it that comes together, a fishing tournament for elites probably was seven or $8,000. And you, didn't, you weren't guaranteed any money. Zero. You had to count on sponsorships. So when last year turned around, when last year at ICAST and Little Birdie was flying around saying, Major League Fishing is thinking about starting their own fishing tournament, tournament series, where it's going to be 80 of the best anglers in a new tournament called the Bass Pro Tour. And they selected 80 anglers to join them. 
these 80 anglers got a personal invite to bat the Bass Pro Tour. What does it say? I'm invited. Yeah, and this is what you get. <laughs> what does it say? That I'm not invited. Exactly. But don't worry, at least I gave you an invitation. Who was in? Who was out? Who didn't get an invite? Who did get in? Who, who did get invited? That's where the speculation and the fun started for the fans and for the media. We wanted to know who was going to get that, who's going to get that exclusive invitation. But at the same time, when you started to hear the 80 anglers that were leaving the elites and FLW, you started to have a you started to question what was going to happen to the elite in the Bassmaster Elite Series. Now anglers made videos and they had fun with it, and and it became something that drove the industry with lots of speculation on who was going and who was staying. The answer to the question everybody wants to know, Jacob, what's your decision? Next year, man, this is tough. Next year, I'm going to take my talents to MLF and join the BPT. The BPT. But Brian and Carpenter, I mean, at the end of the day, I know everybody's, this has been a long show and everybody's waiting for it, but I, I'm here to make my official announcement. And I'm, I'm going to tell you my pick on which tournament organization I'm going to fish in 2019 is... So there were a lot of hurt feelings with the anglers and the fans and the businesses and the sponsors because the sponsors had to decide where they were going to put their money. Is it now they have not one major tournament or an FLW, they now have two major tournaments and FLW. And really the one thing that FLW did was literally nothing. FLW didn't change a thing. They just felt like we were good as is, we're not going to promote our anglers like normal, and we're just going to keep on doing what we do, which was lose money. Major League Fishing and the Bass Pro Tour completely changed the dynamic of the industry in one off-season. Think about that. They changed the whole scale of fishing from A to B. Why? 80 of the best anglers were now competing on the Bass Pro Tour. And we had started to think, how is the Bass Elite going to regroup and be able to field a full group of anglers in their series? So what does Bass do? They drop it down from 120, 110 anglers to 80 anglers. But then there was still, where do you find these anglers? Well, Bass did what they did, what they've done best. Their opens have been successful for years. You continuously find great anglers in these opens. So they looked in the opens and brought a group of anglers in. And then for the first time, instead of having to qualify for the elites, they invited people so they could have a full field of anglers. There were sponsorship issues. There was speculation. There was confused and angry fans. And there were confused and angry anglers too. They weren't happy with each other. They built a brand at Bass that was very successful, and out of nowhere, they just dropped them. And for the first time, Bass needed to be proactive with new ideas to compete with Major League Fishing, something they should have done years ago instead they didn't. And for the first time, they had to react to what Major League Fishing was doing. So the elite had to now, so the Bassmaster Elite now had to regroup and change everything that they've done in the past. And they did a great job of not only getting a full field, but also changing the way that they were going to do it. They started off by paying every angler for every tournament at least $2,500. 
They also gave incentives to certain anglers to stay with bass. Don't go over here. Stay with us. We're going to succeed. We are bass. We are 650,000 strong in a magazine. We have years behind us. We have a, a marketing that is second to none. Stay with us. Don't jump ship. And that's what a lot of great anglers de- did. From Zaldane to Lowen to Card to Fielder, or f- however you say his name. All those guys stuck with Bass. Because they not only did they like what Bass was doing, but they wanted that classic championship. And that is the most important thing in bass fishing, in the bass fishing industry. <laughs> so both the elites and Major League Fishing had fantastic seasons. However, we found out during the year, in my opinion, that Major League Fishing was just catching small fish. It wasn't that they weren't trying to catch big fish, but in order to succeed on that format, you needed to catch fish nonstop. I talk about it on the radio. Years ago, I watched Edwin Evers on television go after two fish that were on beds. I think it was a seven and a five pounder. And he spent several hours trying to catch these fish. In the Major League format, you can't do that. If you spend two or three hours on those two fish, you're down 20 or 25 pounds. And overwhelmingly, the response to bass this year has been one big fish, one stage, whatever. And they have absolutely slaughtered it. I myself was wrong on bass. And I am, I'm terribly sorry that I was wrong. But I, but I realized very quickly that the anglers us anglers and fans are extremely loyal to our five fish. We want to see those big fish brought across the stage. We want to see those big bags. And really, if I had to if I have to be honest, I think bass was just as successful as major league fishing without all the TV coverage. The fans overwhelmingly love bass. Then the off season came. And just when we think things are stable and there's no more of this, it's here, you know, it's two companies just going against each other. Major League Fishing does it again with the acquisition of FLW. Because that acquisition finally allowed Major League Fishing to have a group of anglers as that can they can bring in and compete and add new people. Add the youth and those anglers that do well on FLW. It gave Major League Fishing a grassroots group of, of anglers to cycle into Major League, uh, to the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour. And that's something that nobody thought was possible. But at the same time, it had been talked about for months and months and months. And it was an amazing acquisition because the FLW tournaments have more anglers than, than... Now, when this happened, this again was just blew up. Because now they had, uh, Major League Fishing had said, we're going to make the FLW the pro circuit now. The MLFLW pro circuit. And those guys are now kind of, unfortunately, second tier. No offense, but when you have 80 anglers above you, and then you have the second, and then they have 150 anglers, you're triple A ball. That's just being as nice and kind as possible. And there's some serious sticks on there, too. There's some guys that just flat out catch fish. Scott Martin, David Dudley, B. Latt, John Cox. There's all sorts of people. But now, but since that acquisition, now anglers have to make another decision. Those anglers that were with FLW need to decide, are we going to stick with FLW? Or are we going to try to qualify for the Open, for the in the Opens for the Elites? And here's what you have to remember. When Major League Fishing has 80 anglers and that 80 angler field is completely full, they're not letting new people go up into Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour. It's full. The elites, you need to qualify to participate. Last year was the only time that they were allowing people who didn't qualify an automatic bid in. So let's talk about the Legacy Award or Legacy Chip. The Legacy Award or Chip is given to anglers who win Angler of the Year or a Classic Championship. It allows you to 
use this chip or award to requalify in case that you didn't qualify because of points or because you were on the bottom. This allowed anglers, this allows anglers who've had great seasons in the past to use this chip or award and requalify without going through the opens. But the drama doesn't stop here. Now we know that Brandon Palinick and Gerald Swindle are going to use their legacy award or chip to immediately jump back into the elites. Something that they are saying is better for their livelihood. And we have to take that as their word. You know, Brandon did very well last year. Gerald, not as well as he probably planned, but both of them are used to fishing a five fish tournament. And really both of them work very well in that five fish tournament. And I expect them to do very good. I expect them to do very good. But it left now that left two spots open for the Bass Pro Tour. And the Bass Pro Tour invited David Dudley and Brian Thrift. And both of these guys, Brian Thrift probably has been the most successful angler in the last five years. And David Dudley is no slouch. The guy can flat out catch fish. And we're in for a great another season of bass fishing. And that's what it comes down to. All these new fishing things, the Major League Fishing, the Bass Pro Tour, FLW, Pro Circuit, we're getting more fishing for us to watch. And that's the key to it. Don't hate on David. Don't hate on Brian. Definitely don't tweet about Gerald and Brandon Palinick. It's not cool. I mean, can't we all just get along? This is where the fun begins. The Opens are going to be great this year. Why? Not only have Scott Martin and a lot of other anglers, but I think we're going to see for the first time, and this is where all the fun will start, is that there'll be a lot of anglers that want to compete in the elites again. They can't, they can't justify the $50,000 buyout. Or they don't have the legacy chip, and they don't have the opportunity to get into the back end back into the leads without qualifying. And I think we're gonna see a lot of professional anglers on that on those opens. And that's really where the great thing happens because you're gonna see FLW guys that wanna get into the leads that don't wanna be in the, the second tier. And you'll have the elite guys still competing in there. And then you're gonna see major league fishing guys in there too. It'll be the only time where we'll see all three groups competing against each other. And that's going to be the most fun about this, this next season in 2020. We're going to see anglers that were, are going to surprise us. And we're going to say, why is this guy fishing the opens? Well, he's fishing the opens. Well, probably first he's fishing the opens because he probably has the opportunity to win. But second, he might want to get back into the elites. And this is a great way to qualify. And I believe there will be more people returning to the elites in the future. And that just leads uh, leads to more speculation about why and how. And where does that leave Major League Fishing? I mean, there's so many questions to be answered this season. If how Brandon and Gerald do, how Brian and uh, Thrift and Dudley do. Who comes back from Major League Fishing and joins the lead again? Where does that put the elites? I mean, isn't this already a kind of a little slap in the face that two of the biggest names guy, two of the biggest names in the industry went back to the Bassmaster elites? For instance, Scott Martin, who now is not fishing FLW. He's not gonna fish the pro circuit. He wasn't, uh, didn't get an invite last year or this year to fish the Bass Pro Tour. And he didn't qualify because he didn't fish any opens last year to just jump into the elites. Last year was the only time the Bassmaster elites were going to allow certain anglers to join them without qualifying. From here on out, you have to qualify. But here's where even more fun comes. What happens if Scott doesn't qualify? What if he doesn't qualify for the elites to the opens? Now, in my opinion, Scott doesn't need to do anything. His YouTube channel is unbelievably successful and as long as he keeps doing those videos I don't think it matters to his sponsors but his ego that's a whole different situation what happens if he doesn't qualify he's got a great opportunity but it's gonna be a lot of work the opens are gonna be packed with people you watch and we'll know right off who has this who wants to get back to the elites and that brings a whole different group of 
questions and answers that'll be great fun to speculate and talk about. I thought last year was going to be a good year. I think this year is going to be better. So I want to hear your comments. Let's have a, a honest, productive conversation about that. So just leave a comment below on what you think. Don't be a smart ass and be a jerk. Let's have a real adult conversation on how things are going or what you think things, how things are going to go for the new 2020 season because it's right around the corner. It's going to be great. We're going to be covering several of the events this year so you'll get in-depth knowledge and videos the day that things happen. So make sure you subscribe, click that like button, click that notification bell too so you know when a new video comes out and also send us a comment tell us what you think. There's lots of things we do to give away stuff and more. So stick with us and enjoy the channel. Guys, thanks for watching. Remember to take a kid fishing, get your fish on, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.